Okay, so let's get started. Um, if you are curious about where to hand your work in, um, you can hand your work in uh, by going to istabak.com and clicking the Reddit icon here. Um, it'll take you to our Reddit. This is where everything happens. This is where critique hour announcements happen. This is where community challenge announcements, winner announcements, whatever's happening in the community, it's posted up here. Um, make, please make sure to join and make sure to follow the rules so no rude misconduct or anything like that. Um, uh, make sure you're con doing constructive criticism uh, and if you are posting and not getting critiques it's because nobody has gotten to know you yet. Make sure that you are also giving out critiques. Even if you don't think that you are good enough or you know that's a silly thought because we all see something the artist didn't necessarily see and you'll surprise yourself actually um, uh, by how much they actually didn't know they were doing wrong even if they're quote unquote better than you. Um, well, if you find an extra set of eyes an extra brain to work with is always welcome. Um, so those who are, no one is doing that in the community. It's all good people. But if ever, you know, there was a point when someone rejected your critique because you're not better than them or something, those people get kicked out instantly. Um, <clears throat> and I've met people like that. People like that have already been kicked out of the community just for saying that, oh, you're not good enough to critique me. You're, you know, not as good as, as I am. Those people are already gone. But if there are people like that, bring it to my attention, send it to the mods or to the Facebook group. Make sure you guys contact me through there. And um, uh, the two winners did contact me uh, finally <laughs> for the uh, for the community challenge. Uh, they will be winning uh, both uh, critique hour sessions with me, um, portrait studio copy for free, brush sets for free, along with if I decide one of them, only one of them is getting, I believe only one of them is supposed to get the, um, the, the, the sessions. I'm pretty sure they're going to want the sessions, but there is an exchange between the winner, uh, the, the, the rewards, one of them might just get an art set, an art pack of, you know, sketchbooks and pencils and something cute like that. <clears throat> But I think they will want the one which is worth more <laughs> because my hourly sessions are more than worth more than the pencils they'll be getting and the paper and the sketchbook and stuff like that. But it's their choice. So if you want these kinds of rewards, if you are interested, the next community challenge, join it. You never know. I do believe in judge winner and community winner difference because the judge winner is like who I'm going to end up teaching. I want to choose who that is. Um, based off the ingenuity and the originality of their designs uh, compared to the community which might be attracted to who painted the best. The one who painted the best isn't always the one who um, had the most uniqueness in their work, who isn't the one who needs the classes, do you understand? Um, so it's something like that where that's why I want to have the community ju and judge winners separate from each other. Um, but let's get into uh, the, today's critique. It is going to be on this piece. Um, a couple of issues with it. <clears throat> um, but uh, I would like to throw uh, the, the mic to you guys and see what you guys think of this piece. What do you think are some of the issues here? It's on super low latency, so your responses should be pretty quick. Um, what do you, what stands out to you as the biggest issues of this uh, piece or what would you guess I will be, I will be, um, critiquing for today? So, uh, you can talk about, well, go ahead. I'm not going to give it away. <clears throat> All right. The light environment doesn't affect the objects. Okay. Depth? Yes. <laughs> There is Inga. Um, yes, uh, so the depth definitely, the fore, what is it about the foreground and the depth issue? What is it exactly? Horizon line placement seems suspicious. Perspective, I think it's a floating scene, so we don't necessarily need the horizon line. The light source isn't clear. Um, uh, I would say, yeah, I would say the light source and the background value isn't great since it's a sunset. Um, and the sun is setting on the island, but hasn't really set on the world below. So it's a floating island, meaning it'll get its sunset before we even start noticing a sunset. All right, what else? No unifying light color. Good, very nice. Things are very cool, uh, but I would say, yeah, the unifying light color is definitely missing since we have some pretty peachy hair orangey hair with, um, you know, some kind of a sunlit green in certain areas, which might need to be cooled down. The foreground and midground, hi Toyin. The foreground and midground have the same value range. Yes, we talked about that, the depth issues. 
<clears throat> atmospheric perspective i would say yes the clouds seem to be casting a shadow against the sky and they seem to be a little bit too similar to the values um in the immediate foreground um so we want to no aerial perspective uh meaning three-point perspective perspective is a little flat could be more dynamic with the islands bridge other island and the shadowing behind the house seems a little off cool piece in general lots of potential yes i agree um, so <clears throat> I'm just going to start with the bigger changes, the biggest changes, and then just kind of go down from there. So because it's a floating island, what I'm saying is that the island is floating, and then this is the earth, the sunset will set sooner on the island than it, than it does for us, you know, by the time the sun is behind the earth, and then you, well, the earth is rotated down. Um, and the, the, you know, our sunset is very different. So if this really was a sunset, up here these are still pretty you know blue skies up here but it's a fantasy scene so we could go ahead and just mess with it the artists deliberately picked a pink sky um so i wouldn't want to change too much of the atmosphere what they're going for but you can pink pink uh, pink you can pick a, a pretty pink orangish sky like a pinkish orange i, I still did not say that right <clears throat> all right so i'm just lassoing seeing what I can pull off with my lasso real quick and then I'll try to spot lasso some areas <clears throat> all right I think I, I want to separate all elements from each other so uh, I'm going to try my bestest to separate foreground object and middle ground object from the background. Once we get the background nice and clean and on an average light environment value that helps everyone, which is I think needs to be a bit brighter, um, then we'll be able to mess with the atmospheric perspective of the clouds, surrounding cloud um, atmosphere, and then of course deal with the foreground depth issue. Um, so I can't delete the layer, but I could duplicate it. Alrighty. Actually, no, it's the back. We did the wrong thing. So like invert. So like this and delete and then paste it. Okay. Um, so let me patch this up before we start getting weird banding. I get mad points for my lasso skills, like mad points. <laughs> that was a pretty quick, effective lasso if I do say so myself. That was a great lasso job, Strack. Did so good. All right, just because I don't want any weird artifacts hanging out. Actually, let me just uh, make all of this gradient. And merge down, filter, uh, blur this, Gaussian blur, just so we don't get silly little weird things. All right, so we brought this back. I'm going to just add white. That's all I'm going to add, just a little bit of white to the background. You could get away with something like this since it's in the sky and then saturate to get back that color, um, which I think is the best idea, but you could go for pure white as well since we are technically surrounded by clouds. Um, that alone has fixed a lot. And then for the midground, which I will now separate from the background, from the foreground, sorry. Um, the mid the midground, which is or background really, I don't know, <clears throat> should be a little bit more. Just really simple atmospheric perspective drop, just fuzzy, just fuzzier than the foreground, just more, less visible, just, uh, you know, just a clean white film thrown over top. And the foreground, which is the highest layer, needs to be dropped down in value quite a bit. But saturation can be boosted, but you do have to color correct that, like with the average purple value that you have right here. So because we don't have, oops, we don't have this um, 
uh, the luxury of direct light, we will have less variety in the colors that we can get for objects in the foreground. These objects are all going to be um, uh, void of light needed to feed the color. So you can throw an average value, an average shadow purple, you know, the shadow purple color we all know and love. We can throw that over objects in the foreground if they are really silhouetted. Now, as for how silhouetted we're, we're going, so we don't have to silhouette all the way. It could be something as simple as another floating island has come by and kind of thrown a shadow of some kind over the island, but anywhere where we have part of the pants that look at the light, part of the hair that looks at the light, part of the object, um, uh, here, getting some of that direct light just like this, or maybe a half light, which is gonna be pretty tricky to throw in, but like a, a half light of some kind. Um, illuminating everything on the, the that upper area just like that so that we can get some strong shadows it could be the entire island the entire surface almost the entire surface is uh oops it was the opposite of that can be lit up um just like that as if there's an island nearby casting a shadow. So we get the saturation back if you really, really needed it. Um, I would shift things over. But that's if you really have to do something with the foreground that is not a pure silhouette. I think it looks great as a pure silhouette. Um, it does need a little bit of color correction because some of your colors are more saturated, so they um, move differently when I did the saturation uh, slider. So I'm gonna bring down some of it to a, an equal dimness everywhere. <clears throat> and I think the scale is also off. I mean, you don't have to enlarge this character that much. Um, in order for them to be that, but if they are very important, you do have to enlarge them and you have to shrink the background, which will make everything feel a lot more uh, foreground um, centric, I guess I could say. Um, but, uh, but I recommend shrinking the character a little bit just because there's not much happening. We are on the silhouetted side and they are, uh, really there's not much detail up here and we can still see a lot. The ear is weird uh, because it seems like the ears are just thrown off to the side and we're actually losing the silhouette just onto the side of the head, which doesn't make a lot of sense <clears throat> because it seems like the ear is actually wrapping around and we're, we're losing the perspective. And so if we put the ear back in, the perspective actually corrects itself and it seems like the character is looking at the... Uh, the island which is which is much better because now you have an interaction between the foreground and the background as for the design of the character don't give too much of a dip in the hairline it makes the character look, the head look much larger than it should be when you have large dips like this it just looks silly um, just make it a clean head shape at the top the hood is not really readable as a hood right now because you've thrown the hair on top of it. Um, the hood seems like it's an important part of the character's costume, so don't disrupt it too much when you design it. <clears throat> don't lose the neckline or uh, too much hair, you know, or don't lose the shoulder line since that's all we have at the moment for making it look uh, interesting uh, as a gesture. You can also do something else with the gesture. You can make it seem like the character is leaning forward a little bit, just uh, kind of dangling off the edge. You know, just a little bit. The head is leaning forward a touch. And that happens by lowering the head. And we're just giving the character an interesting gesture. I'm not sure what 
you know, the extra grass is doing here, but it looks like a silhouette of some other object. And I kind of want to lighten the foreground just a touch. Just like that. And then really it just feels like you should be doing something a little bit more interesting with the shape of the ground here. It could have just been like a, a cliff shape of some kind. Maybe a flat cliff this way. Um, and it's okay if you lost some of the grass, you did easily bring that back. All right. Um, the butterflies are good, but their color is also a little bit off. Um, since it's kind of on the peachy side. The butterflies, you could also make a little bit more transparent, so we could try some uh, subsurface scattering, just simple amounts, nothing too crazy. I think it's already saturated enough, so I'm going to actually desaturate a bit um, and subsurface the tip of this tail right here <coughs> and desaturate that. All right. And then for color correcting, really just uh, lowering the opacity of that green color corrected a lot. Um, but the green still seems a bit peachy, but you can keep it honestly, I mean, uh, uh, warm, but you can keep it if you if you want to. The sky color, you could pretty much make any color at the moment since it's working. So you could make it more peachy sunset. You could make it a little bit more bluish and Miyazaki, you know, uh, you know, a little bit more toward that perfect uh, Ghibli blue sky. I like the blue. I like the, the pink that you had. And I like the peachy version. So it's all up to you really just depends on what the color, the color palette is for your game or for whatever this is for. I, I really like the blue though. Um, I think it matches what's happening but I think the artist deliberately picked the pink because it's like this um you know it's a lot more cutie it's a lot more uh, kid like just reminds me of Spyro or something like that the atmospheric perspective is great here on the on the on the little floating islands but it could be cool if you threw in a little bit more and not just that you could throw it in with a soft brush right at the end it seems like the, the island just emerged from the from the ground below so that you can use the soft brush look the soft brush airbrush kind of realistic unity look to games or you could do something a little bit more flirtatious you could do something that is more curled clouds mulan clouds you know uh so it could be new layer i should have just done it in a new layer so i'm doing it with a soft brush but i will erase with like a a less soft brush just to show where that the little cloud silhouette might be in those areas it's like a, a way to complement the shapes you're already using in the game i mean in the in the drawing and you could just do a couple more of those um, maybe I'll just duplicate the layer move things over so so I just mean like little billows that have more of that cartoony shape to them just different sizes And then you could try to curl some of them, make them a little bit more, just add a curl to them. So basically, I mean, something like, you know, like, uh, like cloud shapes, just so that we're complementing these big shapes with some more instead of a perfect airbrush look on some of them. I like this one. Um, I also like the other one, so I could kind of make halfway and just gauge and blur the clouds, but still keep that kind of billowy, fluffy uh, look. 
So we have a little bit of both. As for the clouds in the background, I, you got to get rid of this. Flat, this is completely flat in the background. It does not feel like it's far away. And if you wanted that like kind of children's play cut out cloud um, effect, um, it's uh, I wouldn't say it's good to flatten your piece at the moment just because you have this atmospheric perspective and all these other really cool realistic um, tools that you've used. I'm going to darken this just a little bit, but saturate as well. Just because it's not that far away. Actually, that's fine. I'll leave it alone. Um, this cloud here in the background needs a whiter trim on it. Um, so let me see if I could do it and then gauge the border. <clears throat> so you do have some blur on some of those clouds, but let me see if I could spot where it is, blur, color blur. So any questions at all and um, any thoughts on the changes? Um, this pink should be this cloud's pink as well, since uh, this cloud is not that far away. But now you have like this nice even background behind this where you had one light, one dark half. You really did separate units from each other for no reason. Um, and I want to sneak in, like I want to do something crazy. I want to kind of sneak in the direct light. And it's going to be kind of crazy, but this, this can be the ambient light, which is why I'm smudging these shadows out. You don't have to do it like this, but sometimes this cast shadow will kind of come through and uh, and just get super bright right at the top. So it's like the this cast shadow comes up and like the upper half of this, if you factor in the cast shadow, so you have to cut out all this extra stuff will kind of catch a lot of light. So maybe levels will do a better job. So something like that, where just the very tippy top of that of that building is getting the super bright direct light. If you want to, you don't have to. You do have to darken. Let me just show it to you just for demonstration. You do have to darken this a little bit more. Kind of like when a light just goes through a mountain and like gets only the tops of it, you might also have to saturate a little bit right at the top. That's if you want to pull that off, that really nice sunset um, kind of direct light, uh, um, kind of like a pin, a point light uh, from the sun. Um, I think that's it. That's all I really want to change. Uh, the butterflies are still bugging me, so what I'm going to do is just dim them out a little bit. Oops. Oh, that flower is not a butterfly. Let's darken this one. I'm not sure why they're so big, because they are eating up the scene. And... Um, you can as well throw some of the clouds in the foreground, but I think one of the biggest things you should do is decide on the gradient. Um, I think that you should have light at the top of the sky and darker at the bottom. Um, but again, if, if you want to flip that and reverse it, usually we have the darker value on the bottom of the sky and the... The, 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 the lighter half at the top because that's where all those clouds are but if you feel like framing and kind of doing that that kind of framed val uh, sepia but like with the sky color to do that as well thinking about what else I want to spot highlight here I do feel like some things need some kind of spot highlight just right at the the front door here, just like a little, a little reflection just off the paint. 
this here just on the bottom part of the petal to do some and I am using dodge tool so I will follow it up with some sponge tool to desaturate some of that because it is very annoying how much it um, saturates it's like you already get the perfect color you want and for it to really make sense you need to keep it desaturated in that area because you've already accounted for the saturation to add more is to just throw off your light environment once again um, and then because the light is coming from this direction I feel like we should add some kind of um, that's too much but I will bring it down <clears throat> found it that's that grabbed that Get that rounded look over here. Um, so this can go either behind, uh, in front of, or behind that. But you definitely do need it since that's where the light is coming from. I think in front of looks good as well. So just a bit of atmospheric perspective. I want to just because it's just my taste, I want to move it over into blue because it looks cute, but you could keep the clouds pink. Um, let me see if I can move it even more into blue, just so when we add pink to the clouds, they really will pop. Uh, so color layer, so I'm just trying to meet everything with, you know, halfway. So some pink on the clouds here should bring some of that favorite pink a little, back a little bit. But the baby blue, I, I think it needs to be even more of a baby blue. Right here, just behind. I just feel like it brings the scene together. And then I will finally desaturate these gaudy butterflies. Um, usually in scenes like this, it's kind of um, like they're a team, the butterfly and the and Link, the butterfly, and the, the Ghibli character, they're usually very close to each other. You know, it's just something like that. They're kind of like partners. Um, or the fairy and Link. But, uh, you know, here I just feel like the butterfly being so big, it's on one of the most important parts, or most, one of the most visible parts of the canvas. So, you know, don't overdo the butterfly. Some negative space goes a long way. And do something interesting with the character. I know I kind of fixed kind of fix the, the gesture, um, but do something else with it, you know, just uh, maybe a standing, maybe another character beside um, looking out. Um, I want to keep them short and stubby because they're like little hobbits, but I'm not sure. Maybe a couple more islands this way, down towards this half. I know there's a butterfly over there. All right, and then I'm going to really drop the value for those just because um, it's just lower down. I'm just really filling the area with them. Uh, just a couple more together. And then this one could be a little bit, no, that's too evenly spaced. Be a little bit closer, to, oops, closer to that one, that way. Where I put it before was just fine. Okay. 
I'm just constantly checking the navigator, trying to see if it makes sense. Um, I feel like the background can still be a little bit whiter and a little bit brighter. Um, but I think I'm just being a stickler right now. Because a white background really will work um, as well. And I just want to show you the benefit of that. Just so, so zero. It just feels a little dark. Um, and it's and remember, it's not yet sunset. I mean, it's set, the sun is setting for the floating island, but not really for the world. So, again, just meeting it halfway. All right. Um, don't like the, sh the, the, the thing in the foreground now that I've checked it again. You could do a cuter little island, a little floating island. You could have made him on a floating island. Um, so you could, whoops, uh, so you could have, you know, given him a little floating island. Just like that, just checking the navigator, which actually has opened up the scene quite a bit and then just decided where the surface is of that island and then whatever it isn't, it just gets that white. Just like that. Um, at that point, it can't be purple anymore since we're not uh, separating the two from each other uh, as we did before. Foreground separates as a whole different universe, a whole different kind of physics than uh, foreground from background, I mean, so what happens is that when you do bring them back together or have a similarity of some kind, so in this case they're all floating islands, you have to go back to the island uh, palette that you used here. But if it was a clip art kind of cut out from the foreground and projected onto the background, you can just make it a silhouette, you get away with that. But when it becomes a floating island and it's not directly in the foreground, you kind of do have to mess around with the with the green and make sure that the palette is all working. Um, I don't think the scene is dark enough for us to have a silhouette this dark, um, which is why I thought earlier maybe we could change the palette a little bit and bring in some bounce light at least for the foreground. But you get away with this. It, it works. It still works even if you darkened the, uh, the silhouettes, even if you darkened the little island. Um, you get away with it to a certain extent. I'm still not comfortable with it because it's just a touch too dark um, now that we've fixed everything. But if you do want to do the silhouette color, uh, darker kind of environment, everything is darkened and, oops, okay. we'll do that instead. So everything is darkened. You can get away with like a sunset scene. That's not sunset in the sense that we're getting orange and long shadows, but sunset in that everything is just dim. It's just a dim scene which will match back towards the foreground. I like the brighter one just because it's more baby-like and cutesy. Um, which was this bright, you know, we were fine just from this darkening, um, but you can keep it this bright if you like. I, I, I again, halfway, I just wanna just make the best atmospheric um, impact. I think meeting halfway for all things makes for a great atmospheric impact. Um, and since it's not really atmospheric perspective, it's just clouds, it's just, just a bunch of clouds hanging out, you can, white in the bottom of the island now since things are just emerging another cool thing to do is like if the, if it just emerged from the clouds it's kind of like has like the skirt of cloud that just hangs off of it that you could do you know it just kind of just came out of the out of the cloud range if you want to try something like that which makes it feel more like it's floating more billowy um, let's look at the before and see how far we've come. 
we might sneak in another one since we still have time so we could talk about death some more so before like you see the bed like it looked just looked like cardboard or like fabric behind the character uh, behind the floating cloud which you lost the floatingness of the of, sorry of the island you lost the floating island effect the pink is great but it's just too pink it feels like material it's so opaque where sky is just a bunch of molecules caught in air, air molecules reflecting the light through them. So there's like color, you know, in the sky. Um, and it's being carried in around everywhere. Uh, so it's very transparent, translucent sounding. Even when you just describe it, it just sounds translucent. But here everything's so dark and opaque and heavy feeling for a, a scene that's set in clouds, which is supposed to feel super light um super you know out there super um uh, uh transparent and cutesy kind of like a mario scene or not a mario kind of like a nintendo side scroller look to it i, I can drop the values just a little bit if you want it but it, i don't miss i don't miss the level the darker levels especially not for the foreground so if i keep it i'll keep it for only the background and he really doesn't seem like he's that far away from the from the floating island um, but the but the atmosphere is there so so depth creates atmosphere depth builds atmosphere allowing the depth to follow the rule of darker in the foreground lighter in the background pick the time of day make it make sense with the with the surrounding weather we talked about that today didn't we Inga um, uh, you know, that all of it together will create atmosphere. So depth is like painting atmosphere. Write that back to me. Let me see if I can find another piece for us to look at today since we've got time. Hmm. All right, something else that has to do with atmosphere. Um, this one is great, but it is, it does have good perspective. Um... I think the colors are a little bit off. So color matching for the atmosphere. Uh, but the sky is, you know, the sky color is there. So I'm not sure if this would be ideal for that. Depth is like painting atmosphere. Yeah. Um, hey, listen. <laughs> Uh, the figure being uh, in the foreground is really throwing off what uh, off what is otherwise a very nice piece. If the figure was standing on the bridge, it would fix this um, uh, scale issue. Yeah, it'd be cool if, if you fixed it. But I think they're just trying to create like a character looking at something. I think if the character was just standing with a nicer um, uh, gesture, it might have been nice. But it's just the perspective. Like, you know, they just wanted to have... Uh, a character sitting down all cutesy looking at the at the island which if that's the case why don't we just enlarge a little bit just so he looks like he's looking down which might help the scene and then blur him so that he's not directly in the way but he's still present Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just so like he's there looking at everything, but he's not um, the most important character in the scene right now. It's, it's the island that's important. It's the little house. I mean, you could get away with really blurring it. Just, you know, sometimes you just have to have some courage with that lens blur. And just go for something like, like I, I really, like, just go for something like that. <laughs> I know it's really strong. <laughs> Maybe if you do that. I don't want to shrink him any more than he is. Uh, you know, if you had to have something in it. And then just some simple birds to have one last thing in the distance just to help. Let 
you know, the just so we have some stuff in the distance as well. This, I'm really bad at birds. <laughs> I don't paint very good birds ever since I used to do mad paintings. I don't know why. I just I felt very satisfied with the V shape. I didn't really need any more detail than that for a freaking bird. But maybe a little torso shape for the bird. Um, and where maybe it's just so that we don't have too much detail in the background. I will atmospheric those as well. <clears throat> mm. Oh, uh, instead of the birds, why don't we just grab an island and put it in the background? That way we have something that's not a shitty bird. <laughs> uh, okay, so just some more floating islands. It's free real estate. Oh my god, did this right just do a meme? <laughs> I remember one time I did a meme, you guys freaked out. It was if I'm some kind of old lady that doesn't know memes. I know my memes, you guys. Um, you know what? I have to find the perfect value one. Yep, I messed it up, but that's okay. Just some more islands and put some more, you know, put some more in there, like little ones just floating around as well. And not just that, um, like another island just here as well, just so you have like a big floating system. So maybe grab this set and like look at what it does when we push it back there. Behind. Oh, fuck, I flattened. All right, it's okay. Uh, let me see. Just like these goddamn butterflies. <laughs> and then just drop that. I'm just dropping the opacity, by the way, you guys, for anyone wondering how I create atmospheric fade, atmospheric perspective. Just drop the opacity. Um, and then again, just on this side just so we have a little bit more depth units so that the foreground isn't carrying this burden of um, like the only thing creating the depth, just so we have many multiple steps, literally just like a jumping puzzle of, of, uh, of platforms. And then I'll delete. And then decrease the opacity. Well, I don't want to make them look transparent. Um, let me just... No, that's not what I want to do. I'll just hand paint it. Just grabbing the nearby surrounding color and then using that to make them look like they are in the distance. Just so we have more islands, more of something nearby clustering the scene. You might... I mean, I, I don't really be careful with spacing everything perfectly. I don't really miss the cloud detail with this hiding it, but if you did miss it, feel free to bring it back. Let me flatten the whole thing and then show you once again. So I want to just spot darken some areas. Just because sometimes there are little breaks where the clouds clear and we get sudden uh, contrast. I want to see if I could pull that off here. <laughs> Excuse me. This bridge is, is we're losing the bridge because you're not kind of darkening things enough on the underside of the island. So if you want the bridge back, you got to really darken that. I mean, lighten that area. The bridge is kind of just camouflaged right now. <clears throat> do I want to sneak in any bounce light? Yes, I do. Uh, so 
I'm going to grab this sky color since it's the nearby ambient light. And I'm going to just throw in some bounce light on the far petal. Just because it'll really help bring out the shape and body of the... I'll duplicate it. Of the... Um, of that petal. It's not everywhere, it's just in certain areas. And then the next one will be on the next petal. So here, and then gleaming along the edge. Bounce light doesn't mean dirty edges, right? Doesn't mean fuzzy edges right that back. So bounce light means um, things are still, the rules are still the same. It's just that light is coming from the side of the shadow from something nearby that has snuck in the light. You have a kind of tangent here, which is, Oh, wait, it's not, it's not a, oh, okay, it's just a dangly bit coming off of a, of a petal. All right. And, uh, this just looks like a, a basket, so I'm gonna try to make it look a little bit more interesting. Bounce light doesn't mean fuzzy edges, yep. It just means that light's coming from a different direction and edges can still be important, can still be the same. Um, and then if you had like some kind of, here, let me uh, mess a little bit with, <laughs> let me mess a little bit with um, some game dev stuff. <laughs> Not that it makes any sense at all because I've done this before in critique hour where I just, um, I kind of just find a, a logo of some, <laughs> so this time I picked Animal Crossing. I will color correct, don't worry. Uh, but the title fits in here perfectly um, in that little space. So that's why I don't want to fill it up, which is what I'm trying to show you guys. Um, I don't want to care too much about that empty space in there. Okay, so that's the zero mark. Um, I'll just push it over into, pink is perfect, I think. And then drop the levels a little bit. Okay, so it's, <laughs> it could be any other title. Animal Crossing is not <laughs> the ideal at the moment. It could be a little smaller. Um, it could be very large. But usually stuff like this is a horizontal canvas, so keep in mind, this is like uh, very unusual to have a vertical canvas with a game loading screen. And it's actually very easy to enlarge the scene uh, width-wise. It shouldn't be that hard because it's just going to be an extension of the atmospheric elements. So, sorry if the class is taking too long. Um, so, it is just a, an extension of it. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate the layer. I know this is really crazy, widen this. And a wider canvas really does help you. I know, it's crazy, give me a minute. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just expand on the atmosphere here. So you don't really have to do a lot to get that look. The, the horizontal canvas. At the end of the day, the horizontal canvas is an illusion. It's not really anything. It's just like in film. It's just extra space to make it a more comfortable viewing experience. So in movies, they don't really like they don't really put the important stuff on the edges of the scene. The, the important stuff is always at the center of the scene anyway. Um, it's just a, a fun little uh, addition of space to make the, the scene more, you know, more open, I guess. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do to the front, to the top here. I know, 
peak hours gone haywire. I know. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'll, 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 I'll sort this mess out. Mama will take care of it. Alright. I actually like this weird little thing I ended up with. Oopsie. So I'm trying not to mess up your painting too much. I have to like do quick surgery here. All right, that's just too messy, so I'm just going to clean that up in a bit. I'm not trying to actually paint realistic clouds at the moment. I'm just trying to just create empty floating space. And it makes the scene feel more airy, right? So here, who here actually agrees with that? Like you actually feel like you're, um, you can breathe, you know, felt a little constricted before. And then uh, you can actually have the space to feel like this is a floating island in the middle of the sky. <clears throat> Actually, let me do the grass first, and then from there I'll do the ground. Look, you don't even have to do a lot of work. It's just super, super basic structural additions. Yeah, so you do feel less constricted, you feel a little less overwhelmed by the closeness of the edges of the canvas and uh they're actually just you know enjoying the the open space that ghibli floating castle look and i'm not i'm not worried too much about stuff not looking perfect because this all ends up floating back into the the clouds um, you, you could do a much better job than me with the edges here. You can still see the seams. All right, and then for this, a Sylvie. So <laughs> this troublemaker right here, now he has a little bit more space to chill. And I'm going to get rid of that <laughs> Animal Crossing logo because it was just yuck. I might have to reposition it. And now we can reposition the boy as well because he is, uh, he's not just too close to the canvas for no reason, too close to this foreground area for no reason. So we can actually just grab him and move him a little bit off to the side, which might be a little bit more easy to breathe, make it a bit more easy to breathe. Okay. Um, not a lot of stuff was done, but the effect is huge. So what were some of the changes I made today? Oh, and the Animal Crossing. <laughs> I really feel like it should be like a baby pink, something cute. Can now be placed somewhere appropriate. Um, you know, depending on where you want to put it, that's where you're going to move everything. Um, so if you're going to put it here, you can move this stuff over here. Um, if you're gonna, this is so cutesy for the type of stuff I usually do. Uh, and, uh, this, in fact, even without the title, just offsetting it a little bit gives us some breathing room. It's just like, you know, a little bit of a breath of fresh air. No pun intended. Not that that was a pun. All right. What were some of the stuff we did? What was some of the stuff we did? You might want to do like a better job than me with the patterns of the clouds here. <clears throat> that does feel emptier on the far side. Maybe perfectly in the center was a good choice. You're probably all rolling your eyes like, oh my god, <laughs> just finished already. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so added atmospheric fade to the rocks under the bridge yeah change the shading on the foreground character yeah on the foreground character added atmospheric some color correction 
change shading on the foreground kind of change, change the light to look less cardboardy the lighting yeah the background made it a little less flat added depth uh, through atmospheric haze uh, established a distance between the foreground and the main scene um, yeah so before very constricted feels like you're looking at it through one eye you know what I mean very dark background color the green of the foreground made no sense uh, the green of the surface of the other island made, made no sense. The, the pure pink made no sense. After, feels a lot more airy, feels a lot more open. Move the details from the clouds. Yeah, added more islands to make it feel a little bit more... Oh, islands! So you can, you now have space. I really love these islands, don't I? You now have, now have space to add a little bit more island. Yay! More islands! <laughs> I love me my islands. Alright, I'm sorry. I'm having fun. <laughs> I think that's why this critique hour is taking so long. Um, and I'm just looking at the navigator to see where the best one, you know, where the best position is for it. I think right here is good. But uh, right down there was look, looked nice. No, actually, no, it didn't. Alright. Um... I think blur was my favorite part. Yeah, I'm, uh, foreground blur is really fun to play with uh, because it makes it feel like you're actually uh, taking a photo of, of the thing. So blur, Gaussian blur, but for the background this time. So I'm just gonna, I'm just blurring the clouds in the back. Um, and it's just a little bit of detail removal that should barely shows up filter blur gosh <laughs> no 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 that's not it just a little less detail made no difference just <laughs> ignore all that um, I just wanted to blur the background a little bit, but there's not enough uh, hard elements in the background. Uh, the, the clouds are not showing up. I need like islands to, to blur out there. Um, it's nice when the, like if this, if this island was background and you had a character in the foreground, this would be a great blur for the island. Anyway, <clears throat> let's close up shop, <clears throat> which seems uh, counterintuitive, but it works. Uh, blur makes it so much more immersive. I know, yeah, and focused. Well, yeah, it doesn't. It's not counterintuitive. When a camera focuses, there's other things that fall out of focus. Um, scale, uh, I, I wouldn't change at all because I think things are just the right size right now. Even if you had a little game icon here, the sizes are fine. So one more before and after, and then we're done. Before, after. Um, so I'm not sure why you chose a vertical canvas. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a requirement for something, uh, but try not to do that anymore. If you have any kind of environment, any natural environment, rocks, foliage, island, grass, any time, any, any moment where we have outdoor environment, please make sure your canvas is horizontal because when you're outside looking at the world, you're not nodding your head, looking up and down. You're looking side as your head is in a panorama kind of uh, pivot, like you're 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 panning around the horizon line along the horse. So your head is going side to side. That's why your cam your your canvas is is horizontal and your camera is horizontal. When you take a pic, like if you try taking a picture of the environment with a vertical canvas, it has to. I mean, uh, with your camera phone camera vertical. You flip your camera over to take a nice, or phone over to take a nice photo of the environment. Um, and that's what I'm talking about here is that when you're painting an environment, flip the canvas over so you can take a better shot. I won't be critiquing anything else today because this was a lot of stuff to cover. Thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate when you guys show up to the um, live streams. Um, if you are wondering uh, how to submit your work for a critique hour, go to isterac.com and click on the Reddit icon here. Um, I do post announcements for the critique hours, for the challenges, for the winners, for the sale. 
Uh, Porsche Studio sale is coming up in like a month's time, so if you want to wait for that, it'll be around $45. That's currently at $60. Um, brushes will also be on sale at that time. <clears throat> what other announcement did I have? That's it, really. Um, if you learned something today, please join me on Patreon if you can. Um, if you join in the higher tiers, you do get educational content. I just sent out the assignments for this month uh, for patrons, um, as well as the rewards for apprentices. And then the tiers just get pieces and uh, down to a watcher. But if everyone can join as a watcher, that would be great. Um, there's a lot of us here present on the stream, and there's a lot on Reddit. Um, I invite you all to join as a dollar watcher. That's $12 a year for all this educational content. So if you want to give back, you can through Patreon, even at the dollar a month tier. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. I'll see you guys. Uh, today's Thursday. Oh, wow, the week's over. I'll see you guys on Tuesday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, thank you, guys. Bye.